It's a lovely 45 minutes for Thiago, his first in a Liverpool shirt, but another terrific 90 minutes for Sadio Mane. We spent the pre-match quite rightly talking about Mo Salah, he often takes the headlines. I just wonder just how important that fella is to Liverpool, though, Claire. Yeah, for, for me, he's, he's just as important as any. Um, he's, he, he, does, he seems to me to do everything right. You know, he's super explosive. Um, he brings his other teammates into the game at the right times. Um, he takes a game upon his own shoulders at the right times. Um, and, and you see, hear him, Harry talks there, he's like the super pro and, and, and his, his second goal just sums him up. Um, obviously giving the ball away, angry with himself and running past teammates to close the keeper down. He was involved in all the incidents today. We heard him say he told Andreas Christensen it was a red card straight away and eventually they got to the right decision. Yeah, I think when you're committing the foul or you're one that's been fouled, you know straight away what's, uh, what's happened and, and you know what was about to happen. So I think there was no question at all about the red card. He makes a fantastic run across his man, has the momentum. Christensen brings him down with both arms, and it took Mr Tierney, the referee, two attempts to get to the final decision, the right decision, but he did get there in the end. And it was VAR at its best, really, but no question about it. A red card, and it was a pivotal moment in the game. Yeah, because as we said at half-time, Glenn, when they weren't going to the monitors last season, we might have been mm. sitting here having a different discussion about a yellow card last season. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, I think we definitely would have been complaining why they, you know, somebody didn't go to a monitor and watch this uh, over again. So, um, yeah, no, today VAR's worked very well and, and got to the right decision. And how big a decision was that, the way the game went? Well, it's huge. Um, I, I touched on it earlier. It's, it's so tough to play against 11 men with, with 10. Um, I'm sure Liverpool would have moment would have been you know within themselves over the moon thinking right now it's, we're going to get on the ball and, it, and, and once they uh, played against a 10 after the second half kickoff they ramped it up and got their goals and put the game to bed. How much did you enjoy then Liverpool's first goal the build up to it? It was brilliant and it was classic training ground stuff really I mean the build up was great keeping the ball but just the last little movements the little one two the, the run across the, the defender was uh, was top class. Thiago was dictating play as soon as he came on, as we expected to. But look, when they get into these final thirds, they up the speed, up the tempo, and I just love the the, uh, the run from Sadio Mane. If you've got a defender, if you can see a defender's number, you've got him. You've absolutely got him. And Reese James was in the wrong position, didn't open his body out, and all of a sudden he goes from behind him to nicking in front of him. The timing of the run was perfect and the header was brilliant as well. I mean, he was the difference today, as you said, Steve, involved in all the big moments of the game. That's the striker's point of view. You said Reese James was in the wrong position, the current Chelsea <laughs> right back. Let's ask the former yeah. Chelsea one. How difficult is that to defend against? It's difficult. Um, it, sometimes you play against top players and top teams and they score great goals and sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But for me, it starts with Alonso. You know, as a 14-year-old boy, as a playing a fullback, you get told to follow the runner, don't worry about the ball, uh, because you know it's going to be a 1-2. And, and as, um, as Firmino sets the pass off to, to Salah, Alonso keeps watching the ball and it just completely switches off and then he's out of the game. Um, and then with Rhys James, not once does he check his... He can also see the 1-2 happening on the other side of the pitch and he doesn't check his shoulder at all. Um, and then, like Mo saying, if the, if the striker comes quickly across you, you've got no time to react, and then there's nothing you can do about it. So I think this is the moment they could have stopped it. After this, there's nothing they can do. Very difficult to defend. I mean, one-two yeah. is a, a really difficult at the best of times, but as Jono says, as a full-back, um, he'd know better than, than anyone how to defend against that. But as a centre-forward, I'm thinking, or as an attacking player, I'm mm. thinking just get as... as, as as, as long as you've got him on the blind side, as soon as you can see his number, you know that the defender can't see you, then you're just totally in control of the situation. If the ball it looks as if it's about to be played, then you make your run just as the leg's coming back to cross it and you nip in from it. It's all about timing. Now, yeah. goal two, before we get to the error, from a Liverpool point of view, straight away you noticed Sadio Mane's reaction and praised his pressing here. This is just him all over. You know, I see so many players, they make a mistake and they wallow with pity they throw their arms around and you see his reaction he jumps in the air and then all of a sudden so that's a little tiny split second of frustration and then straight away heads on it right i'm going to atone for my error look at this the way he sort of just jumps a little bit of frustration and now what what am i going to do about it stand there and cry about it or get on the front foot go and attack uh, go and try to close the, the ball down he's ran past Firmino and you see Firmino pointing as well saying you close that one down I've got this one covered and that's exactly what he does he blocks the pass and uh, of course it's a big mistake but 
He's forced that mistake of Sadio Mane. Unfortunately, it's another mistake from the fellow we were talking about before kickoff in the Chelsea goal. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately it is. Um, and again, I don't know, you, you can't defend him. Um, obviously, he can see Mane's running right down his throat, so it's not like he catches him and doesn't see him. He can see him coming from a long way away, and with a keeper with low confidence, you'd like to think, you know, just put your boot for it and then just get everyone up and get behind you. But and, and to be fair, I think he made a couple in the first half as well in terms of being, uh, you know, positional play. Um, but obviously those didn't lead to anything, so he got away with it. But but you clearly can't play, make little passes like this around your six-yard box. Yeah, and this is what you were saying before the game about his levels of confidence, understandably so, given what's happened in big games. Yeah, in exactly. The and, and this is one there. That he needs a sort of the awareness. When, when he sets off... He should realise where the ball's going and think, well, my fullback will get back in time and let him deal with that and then just stay in goal and just stay in control and dictate as opposed to, you know, rushing out. And I think he's just too eager to, to do the right thing that he's actually making the, the, the wrong decisions. There are reports out there suggesting Edouard Mendy from Rennes is going to arrive sometime in the next seven days. Would he go straight in, do you? Does, does Kepa need a little bit of a rest, Glenn? Well, I, I can't imagine that they'd sign someone like that and to not play. Um, or if you could attract a player like that to, to come and you know tell him that he's going to fight for his place, but it's a difficult one because obviously we all know how much Kepa cost the club. Um, you know he's obviously on a big contract, um, and he's he's going to be a player that they need to work with and try and get him back to his best at some point. Because as we've said at the start of the show, he's he, on his days obviously a fantastic player, but he's just not he's just not showing at the moment. Defeat then for Frank Lampard and Chelsea. Plenty to reflect on for the Blues box. Let's get his post-match thoughts. Well, Frank, obviously, playing against Liverpool with 10 men is very difficult. Um, the, the red card was all important. Yeah, yeah. I think the, certainly for chances, the first half was very even. They probably had some more ball than us, but we looked really dangerous on the break a couple of times. Red card completely changes the face of the game. It changes the talk that I have to do at half-time, changes the makes me have to go into a reshuffle and against a team of such quality it's always going to be difficult always going to be difficult the second half of 10 men any complaints about the decision obviously VAR took a part in it yeah I mean I think it, I think it could be given or not when you consider that Kepa's coming out I was, if anything I'm a bit surprised about the fact that it's a yellow card at first round so it gets changed if it was given as a red straight away and they continue with that it was somewhere in between um, and then in the second half it becomes really difficult but obviously the second goal you can't ignore the fact that your goalkeepers made a big error yeah big mistake um, clear mistake and then you when you reflect on the half you say we 10 men for half a game against Liverpool without that mistake and with a penalty we draw the game 1-1 and actually have a couple of little other little breakaway moments so I'm actually happier in lots of ways than I was after Brighton on Monday because Brighton was a good three points and okay performance because we're, we're still pre-season feeling here players have enough time to get fit today was a game of spirit it was a game of character in the second half and lots of individuals showed me loads of good things today um, obviously Kepa has been under a lot of pressure Edouard Mendy we think is coming into Chelsea from Wren I'm not sure if that's over the line yet but it's close if, if not perhaps you can tell us but have you made a decision on Kepa is it influenced by what you've seen today no and I don't want to say more about it um, can I ask you, um, in terms of taking on Liverpool here and in that first half, you know, was it, were they pushing you back or was it a, a tactical thing? We want to try and soak this up and hit no, on the I, break? Don't, I, I thought we, we could get higher at the pitch. I thought we would have done in the second half of 11 because I, th I felt some of our confidence on the ball and where we moved the ball wasn't quite there as it should be maybe it's because it's early days the players haven't been together that much at all Liverpool have had more time and they're a team that's been built for a long time as well so I was concerned about how we would defend that box when I mean, you had the threat of Mane and Salah first half I thought we were brilliant at doing it and then we had a little moment so I was feeling second half we would get out of the pitch we could control it more we would get more chances against their line um, just the red card obviously changed the whole course of how the game was going final one from me um, Rudiger obviously wasn't in the squad today you you didn't have it tomorrow he did well when he came on but is there any reason why he wasn't involved no, every week you probably ask me why one of the four stroke five at the minute is not in the squad all right thank you Frank thank you appreciate it cheers, cheers. and there you have it he's seen a lot of individual positives today would you go along with that um I'm, top of my head I'm struggling to think who but overall I don't think the team performed bad um, I think he's right in terms of saying, you know, obviously the red card, of course, it changed the game, but if you take away the goalkeeper's error, 
and Jorginho normally puts away his penalties, it does change the context of the game. And, and as I, again, I touched on, 10 men against Liverpool is very, very tough. And I think they carved out probably two or three good chances in the second half. So I can see why he, why he sounds a bit positive. Yeah, um, you've got to put a positive spin on it. It's the start of the season. This team is only going to get better, as I said before the game. Probably for Liverpool, could be the ideal time to play Chelsea. You know, there are a lot of new players coming in. They're going to find their feet. I wouldn't fancy playing them at the end of the season. This team has got so much individual talent. They could they could really be the fly in the ointment in terms of challenging the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City for the title. However, it's going to take a little bit of time for those players to gel. And, uh, and Liverpool, are, of course, off the back of being, um, you know, performing unbelievably well last season, so full of confidence. But it was 10 men against 11 is always difficult at the top level when you know, details are so so small. And in terms of defensive solidity, they didn't want to talk about the goalkeeper, understandably. Mm -hmm. you know, ben Chilwell and Thiago Silva eventually to come into that back four as well. Yeah, and I touched on the Alonso with the, with, with the first goal. I think I don't think that happens if Ben Chilwell's there. Um, Alonso's, I think, a fantastic footballer, but he's not. The, the way he plays football when he's got the ball is, is you know, he's super calm and collective and, and casual with it. And I think that's the way he defends. You have to defend with a lot more intensity, which I think Ben uh, Ben will bring to you. So, um, yeah, I think those two guys are certainly going to shore things up at the back. And, and, I, and I think that's been Chelsea's biggest problem because we all know how good they are going forward. As long as they can get that consistency with, you know, the back five, um, then I think that's when they can start, you know, pushing forward and increasing their, their, their lead talent. OK, Chelsea next in action away at bottom of the table, West Brom at the moment. Liverpool, of course, face Arsenal on the back of two wins out of two. Here's their manager, Go. Given an excellent result on scoreline, what are your thoughts on what brought it about? Super game, to be honest. OK, first half, no goals, but um, really good game for both teams. Um, I thought both, we could see the idea of both teams, what they want to do, how we want to build up, how we want to um, develop the game um, face by face and all these kind of things. So I, I liked our game a lot. It's really tricky. Chelsea is a, is a top side, as a top side. Maybe not June 100% offensively, that's clear, because uh, when, when in his decisive positions, Harvard and, and Werner uh, are on a pitch that might take some time, but even that, Look really good. They they changed a little bit, brought Kai in the center, um, and so had the runners in behind, Mason around, and all these kind of things. That, that, that was really good, and we couldn't prepare for that, obviously. So we had to learn it um, in the game, pretty much. We did well. Our own football, I liked. Really good, good situations, passed through the, the lines and through the organization. It was all good, but we didn't score. And then last situation before half time, red card, and um, so yeah, second half was a, was in fact a different game challenging for concentration and stuff like this because it's we're all human beings and um, mm -hmm. um, that's how it is sometimes i think the, i, I thought about the, the, the mistake which happened most often in football in history is probably that people um judge a situation like this in the wrong way so and um, we didn't we just kept the ball rolling um yeah let them run and um, then we scored the goals nice goals yeah you can see the penalty i'm sure it was one but it was one because um, he was allowed to shoot and um, Ali saved it and so all good. Everybody was involved, everybody had a real hand in this result. In particular, what would you say about Fabinho's play? A couple of times, one on one, when Vern was looking dangerous. Oh yes, go on. Uh, Timo is a top player and with, with, with space it's... I, there's no real football tactic which can defend him when he has the ball. Uh, yeah. But Fabinho obviously is a pretty good challenger and pretty good in one one situation, did outstandingly well. So um, we knew that week that he can play the position and obviously today enjoyed it a lot and so it was good. Really good performance. If Sayo does the score two two goals, I think man of the match contender would have been Fabio. Yeah, that's another positive for them as well. They won the first eight league games of last season. They're up and running with two wins out of two. And as you rightly say, as the champions, that's a very solid start, isn't it? Everyone's looking at you. And if you slip up straight away, then you get questions. People start, you know, pointing the finger. And, and all of a sudden, you start questioning yourself. Three points now is just as important as three points in three months, in five months. You know, you can't emphasise enough. Going away to Chelsea, that is a huge win at any point of the season. And this is a, you know, 
Chelsea are going to be one of the top teams this season, no question about that. Forget about today. They're going to be in the top four, I'm pretty sure of that. And to win away from home um, against one of your title challenges is a huge market to put in the sand. Okay, that was the current Liverpool manager. We'll look 